Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z, and today we are going to be doing the first part of What If Naruto Was a Senju with the Byakugan. This What If I have scripted and had all the images for for a long time, I just didn't get around to doing it, but now I'm going to be doing it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Slick talker since a jet. When it's on, all the time, ooh. Yeah. Look at the way that I move, swear. Disrespectful and I'm rude, okay? I had cocaine in the school. Before we get into the series, the person who gave me this idea, Nimere Mavunda Jr., this is pretty much the details of Naruto's background. Naruto is the grandson of Hashirama Senju. He might be much younger than Tsunade, the now cousin of Naruto, but let's just let it slide. When Naruto Senju DNA and his Byakugan join together, he gets a Mokume, also called the Woodblock Eye. This dojutsu allows you to regenerate faster from various wounds, in case things like wounds and body parts and wood that increases overall taijutsu damage. Since it's both Hagoromo and Hamura's DNA, this heavily boosts the Byakugan side of the dojutsu. With the Senju DNA, instead of shutting down the chakra points, the user of the woodblock eye can create microscopic wooden barriers in the chakra system on each side of the chakra point, blocking all flow for a few seconds when you just activate the dojutsu. Don't worry, it is isn't so OP because the wooden barriers is overcome after a few seconds of hard chakra flow if you have the level 1 of the dojutsu and can increase the even minutes when the dojutsu is complete. When the dojutsu is complete, Naruto will be able to redirect fire jutsu and lightning jutsu that are weak enough with his eyes. The dojutsu has the byakugan vein style but instead it has little markings of leaves starting from the side of the face moving to the eye. When it reaches in and reaches the eye, the eye bleeds and if the dojutsu is deactivated within 10 seconds, the pain goes away instantly. To finish off the dojutsu, the woodblock eye when in level 1, the lowest it can go to, it has one leaf like a tomo of the Sharingan and the second leaf appears on level 2 and 3 on level 3 when it's complete and at its most powerful state. Now we finally get into the series. Naruto in the academy is quite strong and powerful with him already knowing how to use wood release to a quite exceptional extent for his level in the academy. He hasn't seen his power yet because his power isn't really the Byakugan but the Byakugan mixed in with the Senju DNA he possesses. Let's say that Naruto is near the top but not the top so he's well above average but not exceptional. When Naruto is in the academy graduation exam, he passes and he passes with really good grades, one of the top in the class, something like top 4. I know Naruto gets a high result or he wouldn't be in team 7, but let's just keep him in it because. Naruto still encounters Mizuki and Mizuki still manipulates Naruto for his very own use. Naruto stands by the window and then speeds through the building. He manages to get the scroll with little difficulty and he runs into the nearby forest. Naruto runs into the forest and then he opens the scroll. He sees the multi-shadow clone jutsu and he looks over and tries to memorise how to perform this jutsu. Iruka arrives at the scene and sees Naruto with the scroll and Naruto doesn't really care. He really wants this jutsu. Mizuki ambushes Aruka with several kunai and Aruka gets blood down his uniform. Aruka shouts at Naruto, Whatever you do, do not give Mizuki the scroll. He used your skill to get the scroll and use it for his own personal benefit. Naruto says, I wasn't going to give it to him anyway. Naruto runs at Mizuki blindly then sees a spinning shuriken going flying for him. Aruka gets off from the wall and starts to run to Naruto. Naruto gets saved by Aruka and Naruto gets really angry because Aruka has just been impaled by a shuriken. Because of the emotional override, he activates the Mokume for the first time in his life. He kicks Mizuki back and Mizuki goes flying back. Mizuki smiles and jumps off of the tree down to Naruto. Naruto sees his chakra and takes out his hands and shuts down some of his chakra points, about 24. Mizuki feels his chakra being hindered for a while and naturally drops his guard from this. Naruto creates wood around his arm, punches Mizuki in the head and follows with a left hand hook. Naruto turns to see if Aruka is okay and sees that he's going to live but he is in a fight right now. Mizuki throws a kunai from behind and Naruto jumps right over it. He backwards kicks Mizuki in the head and sends Mizuki back and through the trees. Naruto turns and controls his chakra into his hand and creates a wooden shuriken. Naruto has a plan now. He throws it at a relatively fast speed but Mizuki puts his hand in front of his body to shield himself. 
The shuriken partially enters Mizuki's body and Naruto sprouts out roots from the shuriken in the place of his chakra wiring. Wooden stakes and sharp branches come out of his arm and Mizuki screams in agony when they pierce him. Naruto then follows with 24 hits to block the chakra points and finishes with a wood casing punch to the head, knocking him clean out. Naruto throws a scroll on the floor and runs to Aruka to see if he's okay. He cases Aruka's large wounds in wood to heal faster and Naruto grabs his eyes. Aruka sees leave patterns all the way down to his eyes and sees that his eyes are actually bleeding. Naruto deactivates the dojutsu and the leaf markings on his face slowly retreat and disappear. Naruto takes Aruka and says, the Konoha hospital will take good care of you. Naruto gives Aruka into the Konoha hospital and he recovers soundly. Naruto gets put into Team 7 as we discussed before and he really is looking forward to using the Mokume Dojutsu. He obviously doesn't know what it's called and he just knows it makes him see really far. Naruto meets Kakashi in Team 7 and he is quite happy with his team because Sasuke is very skilled and Sakura's knowledge of being a shinobi overall is quite good for her level of skill. He also doesn't really like the team because Sasuke is on the team and Sakura is on the team. He likes Sakura but Sakura likes Sasuke and Sasuke is on the team so Sakura will not show any affection to him. But overall for the skill of their team he is quite happy with it. First, let's say that Naruto doesn't know the 64 palms because he isn't in the Hyuga can, but if you guys want him to be taught by Hinata's family then I'm totally happy with that. Also, this will grow a bond between Naruto and Hinata way before Naruto knows of Hinata's love for him. Naruto meets with the team the next day and he gets ready so he has put more ninja wire in and more ninja weaponry in general. Kakashi commences the bell test and Naruto doesn't have the Mokume Do Jutsu activated because he can't do that so he exploits Moki Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto creates about 20 clones and aims them for Kakashi. Naruto pulls out several kunai and throws them all at Kakashi simultaneously. Kakashi manages to handle both these things but Naruto uses the wire to pull the kunai and shuriken back at Kakashi. Kakashi jumps over the weaponry and Naruto pulls them all back to him. Kakashi gets hit with about three wooden shuriken in his hand. Naruto pulls the wooden roots through his chakra wiring and Kakashi's arm can't move because there's no chakra to use which means there's no energy there for him to move his arm with. Naruto uses his small time window to sprout wooden stakes from his hands and he pierces Kakashi. Sasuke jumps in and uses the fireball jutsu and lights the wood that is currently piercing through Kakashi. Kakashi manages to just about get out of the wooden stakes though. Naruto looks around and sees nothing. Naruto just had him and now he's gone. His eyes turn into the woodblock eye and his leaf markings start to take shape when he focuses on Kakashi to his left. Naruto uses wood release to trap Kakashi in the open field. Naruto jumps at him and extends his wooden stakes from his hands and wraps it around Kakashi. He pulls Kakashi up with the wooden release and jumps up to him. He encases both hands in dense and powerful wooden casing and bashes out Kakashi with one deadly punch. This devastating punch sends Kakashi right through the ground and creating an actual quite small crater. Naruto makes his hands into the hammerhead formation and dives down onto Kakashi. He creates 15 clones that surround Naruto like a circle in the air and they all smash onto Kakashi. The shockwave sends Naruto back and he smashes through the trees and Kakashi can barely get up. Don't worry, Naruto isn't stronger than Kakashi or anything, it's just that Kakashi was caught off guard because he didn't really believe Naruto would be this strong and didn't actually try as hard as he could. Naruto sends wooden fists and they continue to pound on Kakashi even when he is at his lowest point. Kakashi jumps away and Naruto uses wood release to push himself at Kakashi. Naruto grabs the bell when Sasuke lights Naruto's wood on fire. Sasuke runs down and grabs a bell luckily for himself. Naruto and Sasuke are the winners now. Kakashi breaks through from the wood and the wood in his arm that blocks his arm from moving also disintegrates. Blood starts to come down from his arm and Naruto says, sorry, I had to win though. Naruto's leaf markings have reached his eyes and his eyes start to bleed from exhaustion of the dojutsu. Naruto deactivates the Mokume dojutsu and wipes the blood from his eyes. Naruto's leaf markings retreat and Kakashi says, no way, it's the legendary dojutsu of the four great dojutsu. Yes, there's four of them now and not just three. 
Naruto and Sasuke are given lunch, but Sakura doesn't get the bell because she just couldn't keep up with Naruto and Sasuke. Also, Naruto had the tracking ability, so when Sakura saw that Kakashi was gone, she couldn't do anything, but Naruto instantly found where he was. Naruto does feed Sakura, however, but Sakura kind of wanted Sasuke to give her food. She isn't going to pass up on some food, though. So that will conclude the first part of what if Naruto was a senju with the Byakugan. Please put in the comments anything that you liked about this what if or anything that I should improve on for the next part. Thanks so much for 1,700 subscribers guys, thank you so much, I can't believe we've actually done this. We're so close to 2,000 now, so close. Please subscribe to my channel to see new parts of this what if and other what ifs coming out in the future and put on post notifications to be notified when they are uploaded. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.